everybody and welcome back to episode 21 of Unwind and Knit With Me. My name is Lisa and I'm coming to you from Christchurch, which is the South Island of New Zealand. And today is Friday the 3rd of June. Wow, right? We're so halfway through and for us here in the Southern Hemisphere, it's our beginning of winter. So, um, yep, it's a good time to knit good time to plan um, winter knitting but also I find it it's a really good time to do a bit of summer knitting so we're all ready for um, the next season but um, hello and welcome back to all my existing viewers and thank you and if you are a new viewer thank you and welcome and please subscribe um, that would be great you can follow me on Instagram as I'm minding it with me and also Facebook now, which is new. I have just recently started a Facebook page, Unwind and Knit. And I am actually going to do a wee shout out and ask a favour. If you uh, do watch me and you like the content and you like supporting what I'm doing, would you please go over to my Facebook page and um, like it or share it or leave a review? Um, because I'm trying to... Um, advertise my online store through Facebook but Facebook won't let me until I establish that I'm of good character and that I'm trustworthy so um, yeah I'm having a little bit of a battle with Facebook um, so please yeah please jump over and um, yeah join my Facebook page that would be great I'd really appreciate that um, and you can also follow me on Ravelry I have a community page there as I'm winding it with me and we have a couple of threads going the one for 2022 is challenge for 2022 where you can just jump in there and write a little um, a bit about yourself and what your challenges are for 2022 around your craft so whether it's knitting or crocheting and Every quarter I draw a prize and the next prize is due at the end of this month. So at the end of June, we'll do another prize and it's where I put together a big bundle of goodies um, and some lucky winner will get them all. So that's Ravelry uh, under community pages, Unwind and Knit With Me. Facebook, Unwind and Knit and Instagram, Unwind and Knit With Me. And my new online store is unwindandknit.com so as always i will leave all the links below in the show notes so you can refer back to those um yeah so thank you welcome i before i go any further i know a lot of my viewers actually come from um the northern hemisphere and the united states of america and I feel that I couldn't go on without acknowledging the terrible tragedy uh, that happened last week in Texas and without going on too much about it, I just want everyone over there to know that that our hearts broke as well and our thoughts and our prayers are with you and it's an absolute tragedy especially when it involves children. Um, so yeah, a big, big virtual hug um, to everyone and just know that although we're half a world away, um, we are thinking of you. So uh, yeah, stay strong, hope things get better. Um, so I'll move on. Uh, I've got a lot of, to talk about today. I. I like to talk about my finished objects, um, also the works in progress that I have, but also the things that I would love to knit. And of course, in my lifetime, I'll, I don't think I'll ever get to knit everything that I would love to knit, but I like to share it with you, um, the things that I have found. And hopefully there's one or two things there that will inspire you to want to knit them. So I do share quite a few um, of my pattern suggestions. Um, not always because I'm going to get to knit them as much as I'd love to. But I hope you uh, manage to take something from the patterns that I share with you. 
And at the end of this episode, I will give you um, an update on my new online shop. So that's been very exciting. It has taken up quite a lot of my time, um, but I've loved every minute of it. And I just want to thank everybody that has gone over there, um, unwindandknit.com, had a look uh, and made purchases, um, especially to all the people outside of New Zealand. I've had um, a couple of people supporting me from Australia and I have had an order go over to the United States, which I know uh, for you that come from the Northern Hemisphere, freight is a big issue. So I understand um, that, that you won't buy from me because of the freight costs. Um, but that is actually one of the reasons I've set up my online store is so that um, all that beautiful wool that um, comes out of the UK and um, America and Scotland, I can bring here so all of my New Zealand and Australian viewers um, can purchase it without the big freight costs. So yeah, just thank you. Thank you for your support. What I'm wearing today is, um, one moment, I'll get the pattern. <laughs> Before I go on and talk about what I'm wearing, um, I did just put a wee bit of footage in at the front. I hope you, um, at the front of this video, I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, last Sunday, my husband and I went for a little walk through town, went and grabbed a coffee and went through a, a, a wee walk. And um, and it was a lovely day. So I, I took a little bit of footage of our um, city in Christchurch. And what you'll notice, the area I went to still has a lot of our heritage buildings. And most of you may know that about 11, 11 years ago, we had, um, an absolutely terrible earthquake here in Christchurch and it actually wiped out, when I say wiped out, it resulted in over 80% of our buildings in the city being demolished. So we have a very new modern city in Christchurch but there are still um, a couple of old heritage buildings that had been earthquake strengthened prior to the earthquake that we've managed to keep. So it was the art centre and the museum down by the botanical gardens um, and the boat shed there where you would have seen the punting along the Avon River. Um, that is just a small clip of some of our old city because over 80% of our city now is very new and very modern. Um, so I hope you enjoyed that wee video. I enjoyed I did enjoy taking it. Um, it was a lovely morning and there was still just that little hint of autumn, some golden leaves. I'm pretty sure that's going to change in the next week or so. Um, but yeah, I hope you enjoyed that. So what I'm wearing today is um, a top that I can't take the credit for. My friend knitted this. And I told you the story in my last episode, how I had knitted an ember sweater and it was too big for me. I just got my sizing completely wrong and I wasn't comfortable with how big it was. And it turned out that a very close friend of mine at the same time had knitted this jersey, which is Lino by Hohi Locatelli. That's it there. So she had knitted this for herself, but she also got the sizing terribly wrong and it was too small. So we did a swap um, and that was never our intention when we started knitting jerseys for ourselves. But it's turned out a real win-win situation. I won't stand up because um, that is just awkward, but it's got three quarter sleeves. This lace panel goes all the way down to the bottom and it's it's just a beautiful wee fit. It's done in a fingering weight yarn. Um, it's done top down in the rounds. It's got a very basic neckline that just rolls a little bit. Um, and I love this wide neckline. It's, it's one of my favorite styles. Um, I don't like things close. So yeah, I feel really quite privileged and it's really quite special to wear something that someone else has knitted for you wasn't meant for me but <laughs> um yeah I feel quite privileged and I, I love the color it's very light um it's done in a fingering weight it's actually done in horse, horse yarn uh I think it's out of Denmark um my friend and I ordered a few cones from there last year and this was one of the colors that she chose yeah so I'm, I'm enjoying wearing it now, my finished object, I will reach for. 
here it is here i love it so this is the lady catherine hat The Lady Catherine hat by Kristen Drysdale. I should have taken it out of the plastic, but the glare's not too bad today. I did post this on my Instagram as I was doing it. And I'm just I'm just thrilled with the way it's turned out. So I've done this in Jamison and Smith two-ply jumper weight, which is a fingering weight yarn. Look at the crown. I did try it on and I tried to do a selfie. <laughs> I had no luck at all. I'm no good with selfies and I've got no one at home today um, to to do one for me. But um, so I'll just show it to you there. I am super, super thrilled with this. Um, the Jamison and Smith two ply, it has blocked out beautifully soft, um, soft to skin and it actually, I'll show you the inside, it's stranded, obviously, it's um, stranded colour work. But it still feels quite light and airy. I would, without a doubt, knit this, knit a whole garment in double stranded colour work in this yarn. And I don't think it would be too hot and heavy for our climate. Um, which is why I've actually bought this yarn into the country. I think it's just outset, outstanding. It's 100% Shetland wool. There's a couple of small sections where you are carrying three colours at one time, but they're only small sections, three rounds, I think is the most that you'll, cut, you'll carry three at one time. Um, but it's certainly well worth it. I can't stop looking at it. I just love it. So what I thought I'd tell you with that, how I did that, sorry, close up in my head there. Um, so I use Chalgu needles and I have this little set of minis and they come in a two inch and a three inch. That's in there, you've probably seen them. But what I did, I started off with the three inch and I think it's a 40 centimetre cable. So that's how I started because I don't like DPNs much. And then when I started to get into the decreasing for the crown, I swapped over to the wee little two inch with a 20 centimetre cable. So I went from a 40 to a 20. And then when I got right to the point that I could no longer use the 20 centimetre, then I went to my DPNs. So that's how I did it. I know a lot of people just knit the whole thing in DPNs. Um, but that's what I did. Um, Chalgu needle sets aren't cheap, but I have found these an amazing investment. I use them all the time. I have the four inch set of interchangeables as well. Um, but these little minis, if you do a lot of um, things like beanies or things with small circumference, I use these a lot for my sleeves, um, when I do my sleeves in the round. Um, so for me, they've been really quite a, um, quite a good investment. I've got to stop doing that. I've got to stop leaning forward. I can imagine that's not a good look. Um, yeah, a really good investment. The other thing I wanted to say, so they're the eight colours for that Lady Catherine hat that I've used. And I have listed these on my on store, online store as a kit, these eight balls. Now, I weighed them all after I finished. So these are 25 gram balls. And the most I used in one colour was eight grams. So you will, out of these eight balls, you will get three Lady Catherine hats um, for sure. All you have to do is add the white. So I, I used nearly a whole ball of the white. So you would need another two balls of white or you could stash dive um, and use a white from your stash, you know, if it's fingering weight yarn. So, yeah, if you love that as much as I do 
and maybe you want to do a bit of gift knitting because that's what I plan on doing is actually a couple of more of those because I've got two friends, that one's for me, but I've got two friends um, that I would love to do that for as a gift. So that's the kit there. It's the eight balls, um, but the white is where you will need to buy extras. I'll just pop that back up there. So that's my, it's actually my only FO that I finished. It was quite a quick knit actually. I started it on the weekend and got a good half of it done and then the following weekend I finished it. So I only worked on it um, through the weekend. So I'm just checking my list. What I'm wearing, my one and only finished object. I will talk to you about my two whips. But I'm, only, I'm going to pause you quickly because I have to lean over to get my coffee. The day is complete when you have your coffee. <laughs> so I've got it in arm's reach now. Last episode, I talked about how I had um, pink fizz and I unraveled it all. I was about three quarters finished. It had sat there for over six months in the naughty corner. I knew I didn't love it anymore, so I ripped it all back um, to repurpose the yarn. And I repurposed the yarn because I wanted to knit this tulip. Now, I love the, the plain. It's quite plain through the top, but I love the scalloped. Let's see there, the scalloped edge on the bottom. Um, yeah, I just really like it. It's by Melody Hoffman. And... It, it is, I can't remember the exact yarn. It's a yarn that's not available to here, for us here in New Zealand, um, the recommended that yarn that she's used. But it is double, uh, a yarn that she has double-stranded with a mohair, which is exactly what I have here. Um, I have, I can't remember, the, I can't even remember. I think it was Prosper Yarn, which is a merino with a bit of silk, and I've double-stranded that with a mohair. Um, so it's got, you can see, the beautiful bit of fluff and halo on it. I was so impressed at how this unravelled. This was like a whole back and front of a jersey that had been knitted up for more than six months and it just unravelled beautifully. So that's the yarn I have repurposed and I've only just made a start. I've only just done the, um, the, the neck. <laughs> um, the ribbon for the for the neck and I'm just working through um, doing short rows and shaping for the raglan sleeves and I'm really enjoying it um, I haven't done much but I am really enjoying it but the one thing I'll say about the pattern it's funny how with a lot of, a lot of patterns these days are so well written that I almost feel like we're sort of hand fed. We don't have to think much because everything is step by step and so well written that when I started doing this pattern, it had on it knit to marker, make one right, knit to make one left. And I'm thinking, hang on, so do I make that one right before the marker or after the marker? Because the patterns that I've always used will say, knit to marker, slip marker, make one right. But this pattern doesn't tell you when to slip the marker. So I sat there for quite a while thinking, I, I'm not sure what to do. I'm not sure what to do. I'm not sure whether to do my increase before the marker or after the marker. And I thought I'd share this story with you because I'm not an expert, but you, we kind of think we know what we're doing until all of a sudden we don't know what we're doing. So I read back to the beginning of the pattern and all she says is slip marker as you get to them. Like that was it. So I had to assume that I knit to marker, slip it and then do my increases. Um, basically on the left hand side of the marker and it's worked out fine. So if you do decide to do this pattern, um, you may just know what you're doing. But I, yeah, I got a wee bit stuck there. Um, and I thought it really is because she's not telling me when to slip the marker. And I'm used to patterns that tell me slip marker, make one left, knit to next marker, slip marker. Um, 
So yeah, that was my wee little moment with that pattern. But I'm on track um, and what I'm doing is working to the marker, slipping it, and then doing my, um, my right and left leaning increases. So um, yeah, so that's that. It is a work in progress, but I've only just started it this week. Um, so that's all I've got to report on that one. Um, the project that I have been working on for the last couple of episodes is my, do you know I sit here every week and I think I'm so organised but I still find myself reaching for things and looking for things, is my Fajola, or Fiola by Isabel Kramer. Um, I really hope to have had this finished, but I'm pretty close to finishing it, but I didn't get it finished. Now, I'm knitting this jersey straight off a cone of wool, um, and I've got to say, and I think I might have mentioned before, it does feel a bit rough and scratchy. And I just wanted to mention that because I have sold a few cones of my Jamison and Smith, and just in case you don't know, when wool is on a cone, it still contains spinning oils. It hasn't gone through a last kind of washing process that it does before it gets made up into balls um, but I, I did swatch for this jersey and um, it has blocked out beautifully and it's soft and the stitch definition is really beautiful and the reason I wanted to point that out is because um, it all looks a bit looks like it needs a good block but this pattern has this beautiful detail work all the way down the sleeve so in my last podcast, I talked about how I thought I could block that out and I was going to use balloons. And I must have had at least maybe 12 or 14 of you wonderful viewers say to me, Lisa, use a pool noodle. And to be quite honest, I had to sit there and go, what's a pool noodle? I didn't know what a pool, <laughs> I didn't know what a pool noodle was. And I thought about it and I thought, yeah, I do. I remember we went for a holiday um, to Thailand one year and we went snorkeling and we used these pool noodles to help for flotation. Um, but here in Christchurch, we don't do a lot of water sport. The water temperature of our beaches is way too cold for me anyway. Um, and it was quite funny that I really had to think about what a pool noodle was. Da, 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 that's a pool noodle. <laughs> it's quite bendy. Um, I paid $5 for this in the warehouse which is a bargain department store that we have here in New Zealand. So that's what a pool noodle is. So I've cut it in half and I've put my sleeve onto it. And I think it's a wonderful idea. I think I'll use these all the time now for my sleeves, even when I don't have lace work on the sleeves, because um, it will avoid that crease that you get when you dry things flat. Um, but I haven't blocked it yet because I haven't quite finished it. But thank you so much to everybody that gave me that wonderful suggestion. I think I still, if I really wanted to stretch it out, I could use the balloon because then the blocking would be more custom. Um, but I actually think the pool noodle is going to be fine. So I have made really good progress on this. I have finished both my sleeves. Da -da -da. And I'm probably halfway down the body I've probably got that much or a bit more to go again but this is like really relaxing tv knitting now all I'm doing is stockinette stitch in the round so I will definitely have this finished by my next podcast and the reason for it too is I really want to wear it I'm really excited about this pattern um is that bit of detail there at the front and as you can see it all looks a wee bit sort of squishy but I know it's going to block out beautifully um, because my swatch blocked out beautifully so um, that's it there I'd really recommend this pattern with the sleeve with the pattern down the sleeve it's only a six row repeat and you're only doing the lace work on rows one three and five so two, four and six are just knit. So I just put it on a wee little cheat card in my knitting bag. So for that whole sleeve, I, I decreased every 12th row. 
um, which is easy enough. I just use my stitch cat, my row counter, but I just did a wee little uh, cheat card for the sleeves. So it was that sort of pattern that you really don't even have to refer back to the pattern much. Um, it's it's really quite repetitive and that lace work is really super easy. It's just a yarn over slip slip knit and then on the other side it's a yarn over knit two together. Super easy. So really recommend it and I'm really excited about getting it finished um, to wear. So hopefully episode 22, that's what I'll be wearing is my completed uh, fajola by Isabel Kramer. Isabel Kramer really does do some beautiful patterns for sure. And very sad to say that I have done no work on my Marie Wallen. Um, makes me sad because I love doing it. So I won't show it to you. That is one of my other main works in progress. And my other two whips, which I haven't worked on, is my bralette which is an undergarment singlet that I'm knitting by Jessie Maid and also a pair of socks. I've done no sock knitting at all and so they're my other whips. I think that's all. Oh and I have got one other colour work jersey which I haven't worked on. I literally cast it on, started the yoke and I haven't touched it for about four weeks so I won't bore you with that either. Um, right so I am so excited. I really want to cast this on. If you follow me on Instagram, you would have seen the pictures um, of the wool that I've selected to do my Merit cardigan. So I've talked about this pattern for the last few episodes. And I have exercised amazing restraint. I have to say, I am quite proud of myself that I haven't jumped in to cast this on because I really, really want to, but I really had to finish that sweater before I started another big project. So I have really exercised restraint here. I'll just tell you that. <laughs> I'll put that out to you because I'm a sh shocker for um, cast on itis. I just want to cast on new things all the time. So I have held back, but this weekend for sure I'm casting this on. So it's my Merit card again, and it's a steaking project. So I've only ever done one steaked project, and I've talked about that here, and I have worn it and shown it to you. And that was the Budding Cardigan by Anna Johanna, and I really enjoyed it. Um, it was a lot easier than I thought. Um, I got over the fear factor of having to cut up the middle of a jersey. Um, so that is my next big cast on that I'm going to do. And it was really funny because last episode I showed you some cones of wool that I had from um, Jamison and Smith. These are available on my website to buy. But there was one colour there and it's colour 202 and it's like a very light fawn. And that was always going to be the colour in my mind that I was going to, it was going to be my main cut, my main colour. But... When I looked at it, I, I, I actually laid three colours out. I laid the light grey, the fawn, and this is just the natural white. And actually, all three of them worked. All three, the grey, the fawn, or the white, they all worked against my contrast colour. And I actually laid it out in front of the window where the light was really natural. And I surprised myself by actually choosing the natural white instead of the grey or the fawn. So that is going to be my main colour. And they're my two contrast colours. So if I can see, FC58 mix. So that's the dark brown. Have a look at the mould in that. That's just beautiful. So that's my contrast colour. And this is like a, this is FC34 mix. So it's like a turquoise -y, it's actually showing up a bit brighter there than it actually is. But it's like a turquoise blue. So the brown, the blue against the white. And that's the pattern there, Merit Cardigan. So 
if you want to jump on board and do a knit along with me and do your first steak or maybe your second steak um, that will be something that I'm going to be working on and that I'll share with you over future podcasts um, yeah which is quite exciting I'm just going to pause for a minute because I have another book that I have to grab which isn't in arm's reach <laughs> okay this is where I'm going to show you some patterns that I would love to knit, but I won't have time to knit, but I really hope to inspire you or maybe give you some ideas. So I had a friend call over last week or the week before, and she brought this book by Kate Davies called Yokes. And I hadn't seen this book. I hadn't really looked at it. So she left it with me so I could borrow it for a couple of days couple of weeks <laughs> just for a bit of inspiration it's a beautiful book um it is available on Ravelry as an ebook so if you're a Ravelry user um it's available as an ebook so all of, I think there's 14 patterns in here um but also if you use Knit Companion um which I use and I talk about a lot because I just swear by it um, that's where these ebooks are really good because they just transfer over onto Knit Companion and you can knit, you've got them there on your tablet to work off from Knit Companion. Um, the first pattern I wanted to show you is Blue Bells. And I just think this is so feminine. I'll show you that. I think I'm going to try to show you that without all the text. It is it's just super feminine i think it's got just enough color work to make it interesting um but the colors that she's used are jamison and smith colors so i thought i'd just show you those in case you did want some inspiration um you could get up and look up that book in um on ravelry but there's um that's the main colour, which is, I call it like a light denim blue, and it's actually one of my favourite colours. I, I, the range is so extensive, but for sure, if I had to pick my top five, this would be in my top five. So that colour there is FC47, and then your neutral is your 202, and then you've got these three here, which is your grass green, your bluey purple, and this is a bit like a turquoisey green. Um, those three there so I will leave the, um, a list of these colors in my show notes if you are inspired to do that it's a beautiful um, in the rounds top down yoke yoke sweater and they're the five colors Actually, I'll show them to you all together because you can just see how those five would just work together beautifully two of these colors the top the turquoise and the purple they're not the exact um, colours, but I have done a very close match. Um, I only have 41 of the 100 colours. Uh, I do plan on extending that range as time goes on, but I can pretty much, well, that didn't make sense. Did it? <laughs> I can pretty well match most colours fairly closely. So, yeah, they're the five colours there. If you um, liked the look of Bluebell, from Kate Davies and the other pattern is called Cockatoo, ba Cockatoo, Bray? Cockatoo Bray and it's actually the one on the front cover and what excited me about this pattern is it's um, a steaked cardigan so you, you do your colour work yoke and then you steak it and once again I think it's just really um, feminine I think the neckline's really feminine uh, and I think it would be quite a nice um, sort of seasonal piece. Just it won't be overly heavy, but it's not too cool either. I think it's just beautiful. But I'll show you the colours um, that are in that pattern. And there's six colours there. Once again, I've swapped out one or two of them. I've put in this burnt orange instead of the bright orange. Um... I'll show you in the picture the bright orange is really quite bright and I don't have that color in my range but I think this burnt orange would just tone it all down quite nicely um, so they they are the six colors that you could use for that one 
so um but once again you may just have the yarn in your stash but i did just want to show you those um because i think it's a beautiful book and i was just really inspired by those two patterns they're two patterns that for sure i would knit but i'm not going to commit because oh, <laughs> and i rhymed i'd love to knit but i won't commit because i just have too much in my queue already but i thought i might be able to inspire somebody with those two patterns now the next pattern I want to talk about, I knitted this last year and it's the Andrea Maori Winter Beach Cardi. It's the pattern there. It's knitted in the flat. There's a lot of cable, um, a lot of texture and this needs a bit of a D-pill. But there's mine there, and it's it's a very dark charcoal -y. Um It's 100% merino. I'll show you that the back also has this, I think it's like a moss stitch, and then the cable. Um, quite a big band, and it also has pockets, which I've done there. See those pockets? This was a big project, but I loved it. It's DK weight yarn, so it knitted up quite quickly. And what I'll say about this cardigan is that I've only worn it about twice because my daughter has um, added it to her wardrobe and she wears it a lot. I watch her walk out the door in this all the time and it just makes me so happy that one of my kids want to wear my hand knits. And she has said to me, Mum, my friends at college always ask me where I got my cardigan from and she said they don't believe that it's a hand knit. <laughs> So I think that's a real big compliment. Um, but I really enjoyed knitting this and I would like to knit another one. And the reason I thought I'd share it with you is because I have some yarn coming in um, from John Arben Textiles. John Arben Textiles um, comes out of the UK and I've got some other wool to show you, but I had two big cartons and I've received one carton and the other carton got separated and ended up in Singapore, then Sydney, and it's supposed to arrive today. So fingers crossed it does. But um, the yarn that is on its way is called Apple Door DK. So what I want, the reason I wanted to mention this because it's all on my website, but there's colours there that I've never seen before. They are outstanding the mold um, effect of some of these colors and the colors i'll just mention a few because there's actually 20 colors but it's called apple door and all 20 colors are named after an a range a, a is it called a breed a, a type of apple that is grown in this region in the uk so there's the colors a couple of colors that i thought please go and check out because they're just outstanding. And one of them's called Pig Snout. One of them's called Sheep's Nose. Quench. Stack McGriddle. Sounds very Scottish, doesn't it? Stack McGriddle. <laughs> um, Sweet Coppin. Spicy Pippin. And Duffin. Now, I said those quite quickly. But there's 20 colours. And just go over and have a look. Because... Um, I'm really excited. They're colours like I've never seen before. And I want to, I'm going to pick one of those colours. I haven't decided which one, but I'm going to pick one of those colours and I'm going to redo um, this uh, Winter Beach Cardi. And I think it'll be outstanding. Just outstanding. So now that you've seen the pattern, go and have a look at the colours and you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. Um... I'm really excited for that. And the reason I'm excited, because I know the cardigan is so wearable. It's such a beautiful piece. And done in that wool, it's just going to be a really outstanding piece. That excites me. <laughs> um, the colour, uh, just in case you've never heard, John Urban Textiles, I think this mill's been going for over 100 years and they source all of their wool from local farms within their region in the UK. And they're the mill that produce and make British breeds for Marie Wallen. So um, we're talking some, you know, some pretty good skill here um, with mixing colours. So that's um, 
that's where John Arbin Textiles, um, that's a bit about them. But the other range they have, which did arrive, like I said, half my parcel arrived and half didn't, but it's the Exmoor Sock. Um, this is a finger in weight yarn. So the Apple Doors are DK. This one's a finger in weight yarn. And it is machine washable. It has 10% nylon, but it's 60% Exmoor Blue, Blue Face, 20% Corridale, 10%, now I'm not sure if I'm going to say this correctly, Zwarbles. <laughs> it's a breed of sheep, right? Um, so made in the UK and it is um, a machine washable super wash yarn. And it's it just feels divine. And what excites me about this is this is the sort of thing that will be... Um, It'll be a, a strong garment. It's not like with the 100% merino, it's super, super soft, um, but isn't strong. Where this feels really like a softer skin, but it will be a strong yarn. And it will be less likely to pill and fluff, which suits me. But um, how many colours? There's 13 colours in this range. And... The reason why I wanted to talk about this range is this is, I, I wore this a few episodes ago, I think. Once again, it's an Andrea Maori pattern and it's called Stripes. And this, I love this pattern. I love the fit. I love, um, I love, I just love the way it sits on me. It does pill a lot. Um, some of this wool that I've used has merino and possum and it, it peels like a bugger. It fluffs. Um, maybe I just need it to wear it some more so I get past that fluffing stage. But a friend of mine has admired that jersey. And when this yarn came in, um, she decided that she was going to do that stripes jersey by Andrea Maori in this um, Exmoor sock. And I think I have all the... I think these are the colours... Two, four, two, two, four, six, seven. Mm, I can't remember. They look pretty close. So these are the colours that she's chose. I think I might have one of them wrong. But what she's going to do is four colours, then the grey, then the other, sorry, three colours, grey, and then the other three colours, and then the grey. So she's going to double the grey every fourth row. And there's 200 metres in each skein. If you were doing a small size and you only needed about 1,200 metres, then you could get away with doing um, just six. She wanted eight. She wanted 1,600 metres. So she's chosen eight colours. So she's going to have a few more stripes. Um, but once again, just jump on my website and you'll see the colours for what they really are. But have a look. They're just, those ones are really um, what I would call moody tones. Where these ones, I think, are a little bit more earthy. I'm not doing them justice by just showing them like that. That They're really, really exciting and really outstanding. So there's 13 colours there. I just dropped one. Um, and it is suitable for socks. It is a sock yarn with that 10% nylon. But I just think for a fingering weight yarn, um, it, it would be quite drapey and it would just, I just think it will be just beautiful in this stripes pattern. I'll take it out without the glare. So, like I said, it is one that I've knitted. For sure, I would knit it again. And for sure, I would knit it in that sock yarn. But also, this jersey that I'm wearing, which I showed before, it's the Lino by Hohi Locatelli. I think you could... Well, I don't think I know. This yarn would make a beautiful Lino, this one that I'm wearing. Because you've got the stitch definition, and it's just light and drapey. Um, with just a wee bit of a halo, you kind of, I'm not sure if that's showing up, there's, 
it's just a beautiful yarn it's not um it doesn't feel like a normal sock yarn which can feel quite um super wash and slippery it still feels like it's a little bit grippy and it's just outstanding so hop on the shop over to the online shop and have a look at those colors they're just amazing and i think for my new zealand and australian viewers it's really exciting because we've never had that range in new zealand um, i'm not sure if it's available in australia um, of course if you're from the uk it's probably in all your local stores and it's um nothing nothing too interesting um, if you're in america or canada I know that um, the Woolly Thistle keeps some of the John Arban textile yarn. So you guys are quite lucky. You've been exposed to this yarn before, but it's really quite new for us here in New Zealand. So there's some of my pattern suggestions. Um, and the one for sure that I'm going to cast on as soon as this yarn arrives is the Winter Beach Cardigan in the DK, in the Apple Door DK. Um, I'll post photos when I choose my colour problem is there's 20 colors there's 20 and they're all outstanding they're just outstanding so yes that's that i think i've nearly covered everything i've had a lot to talk about <laughs> um what i will do now is i'm going to do a wee quick shop update about my online store which is unwindandknit.com so if that doesn't um excite you <laughs> um and you want to leave us now thank you very much for viewing um thank you for joining thank you for subscribing please go over to facebook um and um do what you do on facebook like share leave a review that would be really good i'd really appreciate that because i need to prove my um worthiness to facebook before they'll let me um, use it as a business. Go figure. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I'm just going to give you a really quick shop update. In my last episode, I showed you, this is what I call my favourite little um, project bag. It's quite small. It's a really sturdy canvas bag. Um, it's got a divide inside, we zip. Perfect for socks or shawls. Um, but you guys love them and I sold, um, I nearly sold out of th that colour, which is the beige colour. So I did a new order and these are doing really well as well. But I ordered it in the black, in this beautiful pink. I should have taken them out of the plastic. But anyway, there's the pink. It's just a really soft pe feminine pink. Um and a navy blue so it's beige navy blue black and pink and i have restocked those and they're 40 dollars each so they have been really really popular the other bag i wanted to show you because this is seriously strong sturdy bag these are 20 dollars maybe not no 19 dollars um, but I got these from jamison and smith when i got my yarn but they're a really big tote bag like really big <laughs> um and there's two styles there's this one and then there's a longer one this one's the wider one and i think they're 18.95 they're around that 19 dollar mark but these are a super strong canvas so if you're after um a large project bag that's really quite sturdy that's that there and now the other thing my sock ruler, I've talked about these before. These are a must have if you do socks from the Toab. I think they're $12. And I can't recommend highly enough these cables. Um, the original ones that come out were called barber cords. And I know that they were big um, in Europe and in the States. I sourced my own. Um, and they're selling really well. So they're $20. Um, the small cable is suitable for about a 2.5 up to about a 3.5 or a 4. And you get two 1 meter and two 1.5 meter cords. 
and then i got the large so there's two sizes so the large cable i would recommend from a four and a half right up to about a six mil needle and in the large you get one of the 1.5 let me see if i make sure one of the 1.5 and two of the 0.75 which would easily do a body and two sleeves I use these all the time and especially with my fajola that I've been knitting I've been trying that on as I go um, I tried it on before I cast off for the sleeves because quite often it's not until you've got the body half the body done that the sleeves sit right and it seriously takes 30 seconds to get my needle my stitches from my needles onto one of these cables and then only 30 seconds to get them back and the good thing is when you put them back, all you need all your stitches are facing in the right direction. So you know, before we had these available, we used to use a darning needle and thread, and we would put in um, a piece of waste yarn. But for some reason, when you put the needles back, they were always reversed, and you'd have to knit into the back of them to turn the stitches around. Well, with these they're always facing the right direction. I don't know why, <laughs> they just are. They're just amazing. They're the best tool that you can have in your, um, in your knitting bag. And I know that sounded really badly like a full on sales pitch. And I don't mean it to sound like that. It's, I really feel from here, they're the best accessory you can have. And the other wee thing I've been doing is, and I'm not going to show you these close up because it's too hard, but I've been making these little stitch markers. Um, yeah, you can't see them, but they come in this little reusable tin with a window. Um, and I have made themes. So I've got coffee and cake, which is a little Starbucks charm and a little muffin charm with a few others. I've got Summer Days, which is a piece of watermelon and a summer jandal <laughs> or a thong, depending on what part of the world you're from. Um, I've got like bees to honey. So if there's a charm of a wee little bumblebee and a honey pot. And the other one is my Ukraine fundraiser. And these have the sunflower and the blue and yellow um, colours of the Ukraine flag. And I've been donating $3. I've kept a tally um, and I will donate $3 of the sale of each of these ones um, to the Red Cross Ukraine Appeal. And the last, these ones here, I love. So these are to keep count of your cast on. And let's see, let me show you these. So they're there, and they're just a series of numbers. So you know when you cast in on like 300 stitches, there's a 25, a 50, a 150, a 200, 250, and a 300. So you can keep counts as you go without ha having to recount all of them. So they're um, called keep count, I think I've called those. Keep count of your stitches. And these are all under $10 most of them are eight dollars and these ones are just your really basic um snag free rings with a little bead on them and they're six dollars for eight hmm. they're not showing up very well but um you get the idea there's lots of stitch markers and they're all handmade by me <laughs> so i've had a bit of fun doing those um in two weeks time it's sunday the 19th of june here in christchurch we have our annual wool wool yarn festival and it's called wool feast um and i have been going to it every year i don't know for about the last four or five years as a customer but this year i'm going to be there as a um as a retailer <laughs> So that's, it's exciting. I'm a little bit nervous, but I'm going to have all my Jamison and Smith. That's some of it there. I'm going to have all my Jamison and Smith yarn. I'm going to have all of my um, Exmoor sock yarn from John Arban Textiles. Also the DK, Appledore DK, which I haven't got here. 
and I'll have all my um, these here sock blockers sock rollers stitch markers and of course my cables and at this event they're going to have bins allocated around the place for gold coin donation and they've nominated two charities and both those charities um, involve children um, and donating I'm not going to say what they're called because I'm not 100% sure of the actual charity name, but I know that involves children. So originally I was going to donate some money from each sale of the cables to Ukraine, um, but I've decided that it makes more sense for me to allocate that donation to the local charity, which is here in Christchurch for the children. So I'm going to donate $3 from every stitch cable that I sell um to this charity uh yeah which i'll have the name for you i'll do one more podcast before uh wool feast and i'll have the exact details of um those charities so that's always nice to to do something to give something that's more local um for people in need the other thing i'll mention quickly and i should have mentioned this at the beginning in my last couple of episodes, I've had a couple of problems with the audio and you may find that you've had to turn your volume up really up high to be able to hear me. Um, I hope I've rectified that. I've actually bought myself um, a new phone, which I use to record, and I'm also using um, earpods, which um, I've been told will give a lot better quality audio than what I have been having. So you just can't help these um, I know tech problems <laughs> it's quite stressful actually dealing with technology i don't know how people do it for a living i've been dealing with an it company um, to help me set up my online store and to help with some of the graphics and logo and i just admire those people so much i, I don't know how they do it um, and they're also the ones trying to help me along with getting my facebook uh, facebook um established for the business um so yeah it's been quite stressful but fun fun stress so i think that's everything i should check my list yeah it is everything i've covered everything i hope you've enjoyed the content of this podcast um thank you for viewing thank you to everyone that has subscribed and thank you in advance to everyone who goes over to facebook and shares and likes my page there um, I will leave all the links, but it's Unwind and Knit or Unwind and Knit with me. The online store is unwindandknit.com. And, of course, Ravelry and Instagram. You can find me there. Um, I'm done. Thank you. Thank you very much. Stay, stay safe. Um, be kind. And I hope you get lots and lots of knitting done. And next time I see you, I'll have my fajola finished and I hope to have my winter winter beach cardi cast on with my new yarn and also my merit cardigan, which is my steak project. So that's what I hope to have for you when I see you again in two weeks. Thank you. Take care. Stay safe. Bye. Mm -hmm.